Well, howdy there, partner. My name is Gomer, and welcome to my garage. My rocket garage. We're going to have that rocket engine of yours purring like a newborn kitten. Yeah. <laughs> no, really, my name is Bob, and welcome to KSP Rocket Garage number two. Um, I actually started this series a while back, intending to keep up with it, uh, and sort of never did. Uh, but um, uh, I figured, what, what the hell, I'll, I'll, I'll uh, do a little more. <clears throat> what Rocket Garage is, is basically a K KSP tutorial series of, of sorts. But basically, sort of tips and tricks to, to um, make the best of your KSP experience. Uh, now, last time we, we actually did uh, rockets proper. Uh, this time we're going to play around with some space planes. Uh, space planes are the most difficult thing you can do in the game as far as building. Uh, as far as building something that works, put it that way. Uh, we will get a cockpit. Very nice. Uh, we will... Uh, now, as far as SAS... <clears throat> they have these aeronautical air SAS, which is uh, pretty nice. Uh, problem with, it, with with this this unit is kind of hard to uh, to figure out where to put it. Uh, well, we will what we will do is uh, just for grands we will stick a and we set that to angle snap. Make sure I'm getting it straight, uh, and we'll just kind of stick it on here. Okay. Uh, this is important if you want to keep keep something going in the correct direction. Okay. Now it's it's uh, not wanting to go on there. What we're going to do is uh, using the the shift and direction keys, we're going to tilt that down just a bit. And bang! Here it goes. There it goes. Uh, now there there are always possibilities of things going wrong with your airplane. If you don't care if your kerbals die, you may want to skip this step. <laughs> but if you do care about whether your kerbals die, uh, you know it's <coughs> just a nice uh, nice form to uh, to worry about kerbal survival a little bit. We'll have a, a decoupler there so that we can abort uh, and um, and uh, have parachutes activate and. Perhaps rescue them. Maybe. Not a, not a sure thing. Alright, well we need to have some kind of structure here to the air, aircraft. And now we need some aircraft fuel. Um, this That weighs 1.1 1 .1, uh, units. Um, that's a, a pretty good deal. The only, only problem I have with the, these things is uh, they actually have uh, more fuel than you're lucky to use. Uh, so we're going to actually use a couple of these. Uh, now these have fuel and oxidizer, which you don't need the oxidizer. Um, but um, if you don't need all that, all this fuel, uh, it can be kind of a good good idea to uh, use something like that. Uh, but um, this doesn't weigh that much, 1.1, and these weigh uh, 0.13. So we we got probably we probably maybe saved half the weight of of that. But we're not going to have nearly as much, uh, nearly much uh, time in the air. But we don't, probably don't need as much time in the air. If we're just, just if we're just flying around the neighborhood. We don't need that much time in the air. Now what am I doing? I'm putting on a jet jet engine. Uh, now there are there, there is this jet engine. Uh, I've never seen the point of having that. Uh, I think it's useful at, at low altitudes. Um, yeah, but I always use this engine. And boom, there we are. Uh, now, uh, well, let's 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 stick some wings on here first, shall we? We'll, we'll do some wings. What am I doing? Oh, let's go to aerodynamic. Let's turn angle snap back on, so it'll put us direct right where we need to be. Now let's turn the symmetry to two, <coughs> so it'll put wings on both sides of the aircraft, which is always helpful. Uh, in terms of the sort of the main lift of the, the aircraft, that's probably about all the lift you need for a, something this small. You will need, of course, of course, need a control surface, ailerons, and um, 
while this may help it go up and down, uh, it's also helpful to have rudders. I'm going to use the shift key and the direction keys, oh, wrong way, uh, to have this, these guys pointing up straight. Uh, we may want to put them further, yeah, I like that. If you want to look rakish, you can always sweep it in like that. Uh, let's uh, grab a one of these. Guess here. <coughs> now, in real life, this would probably interfere with that parachute. In K but KSP is not real life, so it doesn't actually matter. Okay, now we need to put some. Uh, you your jet engine won't work without intakes. Oh, where are we going to put the intakes? You could actually put it almost anywhere. Uh, we're going to, uh, for this, we're going to create a structure out of cubic octagonal struts uh, and stick it on that. A cube, cubic octagonal struts are probably the most useful thing, single thing in the entire game, probably. Or at least they're somewhere, somewhat close to that. Uh, where did my other one go? Way over here. Come back here. Come back here. Now I'm going to turn off angle snap because notice here, if I had angle snap on, it's, it's, it's trying to get me all kinds of funky angles. If I turn it off, it'll just uh, conform to whatever the nearest flat surface is. So like that. Okay. Boom, there it is. Uh, it's giving me a hard time because it doesn't like being clipped to the wing, perhaps. Uh, sometimes you will encounter problems where uh, things will not want to attach, even though they should. What you can do when that happens is we're just going to stick something, stick something out here like this. Stick it on there. Take it off. Rotate. Eh, it still doesn't want to go on. Okay, so sometimes you have to play with that. Uh, I could probably stick it up there, but I don't want to. Uh, Alright, well, let's stick that there. Uh, you can duplicate a part by holding down the Alt key. Let's try this on for size. You like that any better? Not really. Well, you punk. Uh, and sometimes you need to trick KSP into doing what it is you want. What is your problem? What is your problem? Okay. Okay, now if you detach this... Uh, it will, in theory, work better. Something like that. Very nice. Okay, uh, now if we just uh, try to launch it like this, of course, it'll scrape along its belly and blow up. And we don't want that. Uh, there's also something at this point that we really definitely need to look at, which is... What is the center of mass versus the center of lift? About like that. Well, uh, the we want to have the center of lift, this little blue ball here, um, either behind or or slightly behind the, the, the this ball, which is the center of mass. Uh, but that's okay uh, the way we, we have it because we need to put on some canards. That like yay. Uh, canards will help you as far as uh, your pitch goes. Okay.
That'll work. Okay, so now the um, uh, center of lift is just slightly behind the center of mass, which is what you want. We can probably adjust it a little bit by moving this sucker. Ideally, you want to have it just behind the center of mass. Like, just barely behind the center of mass. Not like that. Okay. Uh, now we are going to look at the landing gear, because if, without landing gear it won't roll out one way, it'll probably just blow up. Uh, let's see, landing gear. Uh, now there are other wheels you can act there can actually make uh, airplanes that use rubber wheels, which are much lighter than airplane wheels. The uh, problem is you can't land at faster than about 60 meters a second, or the wheels will blow out and you'll blow up and die. So you don't want that, do you? Do you want that? I don't think you want that. Uh, even though it looks nasty, we're going to stick the wheels right here. Uh, the strength of that is going to leave a lot to be desired. Uh, because those cubic octagonal struts, while they are very useful, are not very strong. Uh, so we'll strut that up right quick. And remember the Journey Into Space motto, which is, boys and girls, can you tell me the Journey Into Space motto? That's right. If it can't be fixed with struts, it can't be fixed. Uh, now this uh, landing leg will still fail if, uh, if there's too much stress applied to it. Uh, we will just uh, tr uh, try not to apply too much stress to it. Because uh, the, the, those cubic octagonal struts uh, only handle about... Uh, you know, like eight, uh, whatever the hell it is. Uh, impact tolerance seven, so. Uh, you're not going to be able to land very hard on that. Uh, hopefully we won't be landing hard. We will, hopefully we will be uh, fully under control at all times and landing gentle as a baby. Your mileage may vary. Now right, we're going to put a wheel up, here, up front here. Uh, now you may be asking, well, why didn't I put the, wheel, the wheels back here? Um... Uh, one of the biggest problems that people have with uh, air aircraft uh, is um, getting off the ground to begin with. Because just because you're going uh, fast along the ground and just because you, you know, have a decent amount of wings structure doesn't mean you're actually going to get off the ground. The, the best way to make sure that you're able to do that is to have the back wheels reasonably close to the center of balance. That way when this thing pitches, pitches down, pitches up, whatever, uh, it'll have some some possibility of leverage over the rest of the aircraft uh, because the um, fulcrum, the wheels, are closer close to the center of balance, uh, or so the theory goes. Okay, I think we are ready, uh, almost ready. Action groups. Uh, we're going to set up the abort action group, uh, which will uh, decouple that. And nope. And activate those so that if we see that, that we ha have reached a moment of complete fuck up and fuck up in this uh, we can hit the back base key and abort and maybe the Kerbal will live or maybe not all right we will call this rocket garage one save now even though I have take, taken all, all possible due diligence to make sure that this thing will actually work. Um, there's no actual guarantees that it will. We'll just have to find out. Alrighty? Launch. That's the thing. I mean, even if you're a KSP Pro, you, you're going to fuck up planes sometimes, because planes are hard. Alan Kerman, the most cowardly member of our, our astronaut crew. That's awesome. Okay. Uh, now, just doing a quick check over, we have engines, we have fuel, and we have air. Very important for jet engines if you want them to take off. We'll throttle up about halfway. Activate the engines. Yeah, that was very easy. That was super easy. That was ridiculous. Let's throttle up. Let's put her through her paces. 
Poor Alan. <laughs> Did you have time to time to hit the uh now let's restart that. I wanna see what exactly the nature of the failure was, aside from pilot error. And you may, may discover that your planes have certain weaknesses in certain areas. And even though, oh, whoa, locked up. Even though they may be splendid in some areas, they may have uh, bad performance in certain other areas. Okay, well, let's get a little altitude. Okay, let's uh, check the uh, climb capacity. Let's throttle up. Climbs like a rocket. Very good. Throttle back down. Uh, check the spin. Spin's good. Uh, let's check the, uh, let's see. Uh-oh, oh, okay, whoa, lost control. Uh, apparently if you go into a very, yeah, you, it doesn't like to, um, doesn't like to bank real hard. Uh, and now it appears, appears to have momentarily lost control. It might be a benefit to make the aircraft longer than it is, uh, so that it has a bit more space between the um, control surfaces in the back and the canard. Um, uh, uh, don't freak out. Um, and everyone go, get, goes nuts about me leaving landing gear down, uh, which I understand, but, you know, shit happens. Um, okay, let's try to land it. Now, okay, it's, it's showing showing some signs of instability. Let's go ahead and kill the engine. For something this small and light, uh, there, there should be no, no need to have uh, engines on during landing. Now, if you've got a big heavy thing, <clears throat> that could be a totally different issue. Totally different issues. <coughs> Come on. Get down. Please, thank you. Okay, hit the brakes. Uh, it's good to, to kind of hit the brakes intermittently at first uh, so that your aircraft does not flip end over end when you try to slam on all the brakes all at once. Yeah. Okay, very good. Let's go ahead and uh, fix some of our minor problems. Uh, end flight. End flight. Space plane hangar. Okay. As I mentioned before, uh, it um, uh, had some instability issues, which I think could be resolved by simply making the aircraft longer. Let's put up our center of mass and center of lift so we can see what we're doing here. Okay, uh, the fortunate aspect of this is that now the center of um, uh, mass is uh, well forward of the center of lift. Uh, it's better to have it um, forward of the center of lift than have lift, the center of lift ahead. Because if you have the center of lift ahead, it's, it's, you got a pretty much unresolvable problem to some degree. Uh, I would rather have the center of mass further back or the center of lift further forward. Uh, I may have a res resolution to that. Bring up our aerodynamics. Let's get the little ailerons here. All right, that should be almost perfect. We're gonna say call this rocket garage two. Safe. Ah, oh, Alan Kerman, you poor fool. Launch. Again, if you want to have a longer duration uh, aircraft, you may want to use a fuel tank in here. Uh, I'm I went with a uh, uh, much smaller amount of fuel because simply because I don't need that much. And even from what I did uh, last time, there was no, there was no, uh, 
and it still takes off very nicely. There was no risk of me running out of fuel at, at any point. Let's throttle up a little bit. Seems to be not quite as, as nimble as it was, but perhaps, perhaps it's more stable in a bank. Let's uh, go ahead and do a climb test. Throttle up to max. Still climbs like a rocket pretty much. Let's throttle it back down. Okay. Spin performance, still very good. Not Perhaps not as good as it was. Uh, banking performance. A little bit better. A little bit less prone to go out of control or to be more more maneuverable when it does have a problem. Okay, let's uh, let's go down and do some stunts. I kind of like the first one better, even though it was very uncontrollable in, in certain scenarios. This is a more stable aircraft, but it's not necessarily. I don't. I don't. Uh, I don't like the. Uh, it seems to be some some degree of uh, sacrifice of performance uh, in everything except for banking. So you may have to kind of balance out these things. <coughs> you know, determine which which is the more important uh, um, attribute of your aircraft. You know, you may <coughs> you may really really need to have more stability. You may need to have more maneuverability. All right, let's throttle it up, throttle all the way up. Let's see what this baby can do. Yeah, a little, little bit, little bit wonky. Not bad. Down, down, Oh no, 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 back! <laughs> I reached for the back space, but no go. Okay, well, there's a, a number of areas where we could um, uh, think about improving that. Uh, we're going to move right along, though, uh, because we did. Uh, achieve our objective of getting a working airplane. It does work. Uh, I kind of like the first one better. Let me give this one another try. See if it's to what degree its banking problems were uh, were pilot error and to what degree they were uh, machine error. It takes off really nice. I like that. This one just seems to be a lot more maneuverable, a lot easier to handle. Uh, did have some major issues with banking. Banking, banking. It does. It does, will bank very fast, but it also tends to lose control, sort of like that. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It has some <coughs> some control issues on the banks. <coughs> and you can you can work to um and you can and should work to perfect your uh, your aircraft, uh, work out their little uh, uh, deficiencies. Uh, I'm going to turn fine control on. Fine control is caps lock. And uh, if you want, want really want a fun experience, uh, try doing a uh, landing from inside the cockpit. Well, okay. Assuming you live, assuming you survive. Now I'm thinking that I don't need to use engines here, that I will make it to the launch pad, <laughs> or the runway. I could be wrong about that, <coughs> but we will see. This is still a relatively pretty light aircraft. Uh, we will see what we get. Uh, you can use your uh, mouse wheel to uh, kind of zoom in and zoom out.
I'm going to give it just a little bit more gas. It can be in some ways easier to do a, a landing if you have good visibility uh, from inside the cockpit, uh, but it can be challenging at first as you don't have the usual interface. There we go. Come on, come on. There we go. Ba dunk. Okay. Pulsing our, our brakes. Using our rudder to stay on uh, the runway. And we're stopped. Okay, well, we're going to move on to the next flight. Flight. Space Center. Uh, now, jet engines uh, can not only be used for jets, uh, they can be used for rockets. Uh, matter of fact, for a very small rocket, um, a, jet, a jet engine first stage is probably the, what I would call, I would describe as the preferred way of doing it, as long as you understand that, that, that uh, you have to jettison that stage before you your engine runs out of air or fuel because if it runs out of air or fuel first you could have a problem let's see what what's what's my little uh, my little uh, rocket what the hell is that <laughs> god what the fuck I don't even remember what that is just load it up just for grins. Okay, that was weird. Whatever that was. Uh, load. I think that was one of my attempts at a UFO. What am I looking for? I just created a, re recently created a, a very small, uh, it's not the Piper 2, is it? Uh, it might be the Piper 2. Okay, as you can see, it's got um, it's got eight uh, jet engines. Uh, it's got 16. No, more than 16. Um, yeah, it's got a bunch of jet air in, in, intakes, um, uh, and uh, then above that, a rocket. Let's go ahead and uh, launch that just for grins. Now, if you do make a rocket with uh, with um, jet engines, one thing that's important to understand is uh, the jet engines take a while to spool up, spool up to their maximum thrust, so it's a good idea to put the whatever launch brackets, whatever, what, the hell, what the hell do you call those? Launch, uh, whatever. <laughs> put these things, these uh, launch constraints, uh, on a higher stage so that you have a chance to spool up the engine first, uh, and then uh, you can uh, uh, you can release it and let it do its thing. Yes, okay, I'll explain that poorly. Uh, let me take a look at my... Uh, oh, stop fucking up. Action groups. Uh, perhaps I don't have any action groups. Perhaps I should have action groups. Okay. Uh, custom 2. Uh, we're going to... Uh, toggle engine, uh, so that we can sh uh, when we get close cl to the point where we're running out of air, uh, we can go ahead and uh, shut those down before we uh, jettison them. Because if we jettison them and they're still running, they'll collide with the rest of the rocket. All right, so that's custom two. Uh, save and launch. And this, even though this is a very small rocket, it will get to orbit. Uh, it'll get up to, uh, to orbit. It'll rendezvous with my. Uh, uh, with my uh, space station and the whole works, we're not we're not going to do all that. Uh, we're just going to get it up into space, but um, it will it will get up to to a very reasonable. Uh, it will get to orbit. Put it that way. It'll get to orbit. Did I have any kind of? Um, I keep on thinking this is not actually the my latest one. Hold on, let me take a look at it right quick. Okay, what the hell is a Bubodyne Mark One? I? I don't know what half these things are. Nope, and it crashed.
okay, my um, KSP crashed, and I just got uh, figured out that uh, that what I showed you was not my 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 most recent and petite uh, unit. Uh, this is my most recent and petite unit. Uh, that even smaller than the one I had before. Uh, uses um, jet engines. Uh, and do I have action groups on this? Yes, I do. Okay, custom two. All right, let's launch it. Okay, that's out. Okay. Bottle to max. SAS on. And as you can see, it's a very, very petite little rocket. Uh, jet engine start in 3, 2, 1. Go. You can right click on the engine to see what your uh, thrust is. I'm going to wait until after I'm uh, about, about at 100. Uh, about a hundred, okay. And keep an eye on your uh, intake air. Actually, it's better to use use this. Okay, and lift off. I'm gonna get a little bit tilted over if I can, just because it can be really hard to to tilt over once it, it gets going. And we got Alan Kerman again. Poor guy. As you can see, it's a it's a very small for for an orbital craft. That's that's pretty darn small. Okay, we're at uh, 10,000. Let's see if it'll let us uh, tilt over a little bit without causing a catastrophe. Uh, caps lock on. Okay. Okay, I uh, need to use action group 2, or we can just do that. Uh, let's get uh, get things. It's, yeah, that is what is, what can happen if you have a uh, aircraft that um, a spacecraft that uses jet engines, which is uh, you could wind up uh, waiting too long to jettison that stage. But as you can see, it well, it's it's gotten this fairly fairly far up. But uh, come on, bring it in. Thank you very much. All right, throttle up. Again, uh, orbital the lowest orbital altitude that is uh, stable is uh, 70 kilometers, 70,000 meters. That's what we're aiming for. And 70. Uh, through all the uh, the various uh, hemming and hawing, we uh, we uh, got our orbit off to a, a weird angle. Uh, since we're not actually going anywhere, it doesn't really matter. Uh, but when we go to um, go to um, uh, finish our circularization, what we'll do is we'll just burn a little further north, something like that. Okay, and we're going to uh, start our circularization burns at uh, T minus 45 seconds.
Let's uh, get over a little bit. Look about there. About there. Okay. Anyway, as you can see, um, uh, as long as you're willing to um, deal with the peculiarities of a, um, uh, a jet engine-based rocket, um, it is a, a very effective and efficient way of uh, getting a very effective and efficient first stage. Uh, now, uh, space planes. Space planes are, are, in a way, a whole other thing uh, besides, uh, you know, the whole, they add a whole level of other level of complication on top of the, the, the general complication of having to build uh, an aircraft, which is, is hard enough. Uh, building a space plane with stock parts. Now, there are all sorts of mod parts that can make uh, life easier for you, if, if you're a pussy. <laughs> but... Uh, uh, but uh, if you uh, choose to uh, choose to do, make a stock uh, space plane, uh, you're in for a hard road. Uh, but it is a, g a good learning experience. Uh, so I would highly recommend uh, attempting that at some point. That, that may be a, a topic for uh, for some future. And you can also also make, uh, which may be a little bit easier, make uh, things that launch uh, vertically uh, but um, land horizontally. That's uh, easier really than uh, making something that, that will uh, launch and land horizontally. Okay. Alright, and we're in orbit. <coughs> and we probably have, <coughs> sorry, probably have fuel to spare. Yeah, we have we have fuel to spare. So we could uh, jettison this this uh, uh, this part. Uh, it has its own little brain, so it can we can use that remaining fuel to do over it if you want. Um, and I just leave that uh, floating around in space. Yeah, leave it floating around in space. I'm sure Alan would like that a lot. Help me! Get me out of here! Okay, we'll we'll leave Alan floating in space. Uh, let's see. Uh, now you don't necessarily have to have uh, jet engines on an aircraft. You can use can use rocket engines. However, they're not going to be nearly as efficient. Uh, well, let's uh, let's just pick a cockpit here. Um, uh, efficiency of an engine is measured by uh, specific impulse or, or ISP. Uh, if you see here, uh, that's a fairly efficient engine. The Aerospike uh, has a uh, ISP in vacuum or ISP at sea level of 388. This has a um, ISP at sea level of 800. Uh, so more than twice twice as efficient, which means it'll use uh, fuel at a lower rate. <clears throat> you'll be able to get farther on, on a uh, given amount of fuel. Uh, not to mention the fact that the fuel tanks for jets uh, don't don't have to carry oxidizer. Uh, so um, uh, for efficiency, the, the jet engines are the most efficient engines in the in the game. Um, well, I mean, well, they're, they're, uh, it's possible that maybe the, the ion engines would be actually more efficient, but for, for all practical purposes, it's the most efficient engine in the game. Um, you can, of course, always build a rocket, build a um, uh, a airplane that has uh, rocket engines. And we'll stick some on here, boom. Stick some on here, boom. 
Um, now, if you want to actually have something like that that actually gets to orbit, that's that's another thing. Not necessarily an easy thing. I'm gonna slap some uh, canards on here. <clears throat> We're not gonna bother with a with a, any kind of rescue scenario. It's uh, it's do or die. Yeah. Uh, slap wheel on here. A couple more. And that where my center balance is. Uh, just for grins, I'm going to um, slap a uh, extra because the 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 center of lift is actually right now ahead of the center of balance. Well, no, let's let's take uh, let's take some canard, some uh, yeah, pins. Ailerons is what I was looking for. Let's do this first before we start jacking around too much. Okay, that's about right. Uh, I'm not even going to bother saving it. Let's just launch it, and you can see uh, it is very possible to uh, build a plane that uses rocket engines. It's just not as efficient. Rattle up. And go. We'll set it up to about there. Throttle up. Let's see how far we. Whoa! How far we go? Maybe not far. And drop it like a rock. <laughs> Sorry, Bilbrey. Oh, it's 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 flying. It's alive. Uh, I did not give you any parachutes, Bilbrey. Uh, I'm real sorry about that. <laughs> Let's do a restart. Oh, and I have no SAS on that. <clears throat> Might be good. Bill Bree would, Bill, Bill would probably appreciate it if I gave him an escape option. Yeah, that there, here we go. Couple of parachutes. Here we go, OSHA approved. And also, um, bear in mind, uh, in comparison with uh, the aircraft we had flew before, this tank is very heavy. Uh, probably weighs way more than what that whole aircraft uh, weighed before. <coughs> Come on. Alright, we'll stick it up about there. Bottle up. <coughs> we'll see how far it goes. Maybe to the edge of space, though I kind of doubt it. Bilbrey, you're looking really reluctant. What's your stats, Bilbrey? Uh, half courageous and half stupid. You're not looking very courageous, honestly. To be to be honest, you're not looking very courageous at the moment. Uh, you can also do uh, mixtures, uh, which is probably uh, for space planes. Probably the ideal is to. Um, have a, uh, a jet engine to start out with so that you're able to take advantage of the uh, of the uh, higher efficiency and then a rocket engine later on uh, also you don't have to you don't have to uh, use rocket fuel with the rocket engine just bear in mind uh, that uh, if you attach uh, like these normal tanks to a jet engine uh, it's not going to use the oxidizer so all right well we're about uh, Got about uh, six of the, the fuel left, and we're up to fourteen thousand. Not too shabby. Okay. 
Yeah, we're out of fuel. I got us up to an apoapsis of about 49,000. It'll go down, though, because we're going to still going through the atmosphere. So that's, that's, a, that's a suborbital space plane. Um, yeah, you can uh, add on to that to, uh, uh, to make it a, a more orbital space plane. Uh, bear in mind, though, that I, I never did pick up my landing gear. So someone, someone's anus is going to clench over that. I can tell you, tell you that. Um, uh, bear in mind, though, that the, the the bigger and heavier your space plane is, the harder it is to get it off the uh, runway. Yeah. Bilbrey, you're looking a little freaked out there, dude. You're looking at the stars out in space and going, I don't want to go there. Okay. Uh, now, uh, suborbital space planes can be very useful. For instance, uh, I was looking uh, to go over to a, uh, a pyramid complex that I think is over here. Uh, and uh, just to fly a normal plane over there, it just, just, just takes a stupidly long amount of time. Uh, so... Uh, doing a uh, space plane <coughs> was a good option. Now, uh, you, you, that, that was a one-way trip, so he wasn't going to come back from that. Uh, but still, if you want to say check out a particular uh, geologic feature on uh, Kerbin, uh, probably your best, if it's, unless it's right close, uh, best option is to go with a space plane. Uh, because uh, that will give you some maneuverability once you get in the atmosphere. Uh, you can kind of look around, tour stuff. Uh, so that's a good option. Uh, probably the, the the best option for actually exploring Kerbin is a space plane. Uh, and the space plane I, I sent over to the pyramids over here was actually a rocket launched space plane. Uh, it was launched vertically and uh, lands horizontally. Okay, I think that's about all for right now. Uh, I might do another one uh, sometime soon uh, just on space planes. What the hell is that over there? Oh, well, whatever. What is that? Yeah, I have something over there. Okay, whatever. Um, I might, I might do a further rocket garage just on space planes, just for grins. But uh, the most important thing uh, <clears throat> when you're first starting out is to learn how to make planes. Because uh, if you can't make planes, you can't make space planes. Oh, it's gonna burn up the atmosphere. Sorry, Bilbrey. Oh, you lost control. You're spinning. You've lost it. No, you're okay. No, you're not. <laughs> oh, re-entry heating. Awesome. Whee! Oh, shit. I better get out and pilot the damn thing. Uh, Bilberry. Uh, you know that abort scenario that we talked about? I think it's time to use it. Now you think you can pull that out? You can't pull that out, man. That's 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 a lost cause. Nope, you're gonna die. And the backspace key is abort. I said backspace key is abort. Oh, but I didn't, I didn't set that up on that one. Okay. You're okay, Bilbrey. You'll be fine. You just don't look it like it. you're going to be fine. Or you're going to upchuck. Alright. Well, that's all for this time. Uh, and uh, until next time, hasta la vista. Goodbye, Bilbrey. Adios.